It's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So what am I going to be talking about today? Well, as you saw in the title, we're going to be talking about minimums. And we're going to be talking about four different things regarding minimums. The first thing is going to be talking about dollar versus amount minimums. The second thing we're going to be talking about is how much should you actually set your minimum for? The third thing we're going to be talking about is how to actually implement those minimums. And the fourth thing that we're going to be talking about is what if you hear a lot of complaints? So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is dollar versus number minimums. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos where I share my pricing, I tend to put in brackets what the minimum of that particular item is. Now, the reason that I think that this is probably not the best system is because not all products value the same dollar amount. For example, I used to put a 24 order minimum on sugar cookie orders, which in theory makes sense because you're basically saying it's not worth it for me to make one cookie or two cookies. It's much more worth it for me to make 24 cookies. But when I thought about it, in essence, you're probably not really covering yourself fully because as we know, not all sugar cookies are decorated equally. There are some sugar cookies that are going to be very cheap at $3 a sugar cookie, but then there are some that are very intricate that might run you up to $10 a sugar cookie, for example. So setting up that type of minimum doesn't really always cover you because as we know, something with sugar cookies is going to be made with the sugar cookie dough and probably some sort of royal icing or glaze. It's the same exact ingredients, but the time that's going into it is very, very different. On top of that, with something like a cake, there is no order minimum that you could really set if you're going by numbers. You can't say, oh, it's a minimum of three cakes. Most people want one cake. And so that's why as I've gone through the years, I've really been thinking about implementing a dollar minimum. This would be much more effective in covering your time. So instead of saying it needs to be a 24 order cookie minimum, I would say it needs to be X amount of money. Now you could say you might implement a dollar minimum for something that's like a cake, and then you could do an order minimum for something like macarons or cookies where they're actual pieces of things. But I personally rather, as a customer and an owner, would rather streamline everything so that it's very, very clear. When you walk into that bakery, you know exactly how much it is that you're going to have to be spending. Now, truthfully, I never actually implemented a dollar minimum. I had always stuck to the number minimum. I did a lot more cookie orders back when I was selling than I did cake. And I did sell cakes as well, but I never really implemented any minimums whatsoever. But now, some of you have already been thinking about setting a dollar minimum, and you really don't need to be sold on the idea of setting a dollar minimum, but you're wondering, well, where do I set that price point at? It really is dependent upon a few things. The first thing is your reputation. Have you built up enough of a reputation, either on social media or word of mouth, where people want your product? You need to think about how many orders are you doing on average a week? And are you happy with the number of orders? Do you feel overwhelmed? Are you having to turn a lot of orders down? Orders that maybe you want to do. And this is one of the big, big things about once you kind of start your reputation, you get to be more selective. If you guys have seen my channel before, you know I am not a fan of doing stuff like Paw Patrol cakes or character cakes that I'm not interested in. However, they're really, really big money makers because when you're making something to the likeness of something that somebody already recognizes, this is things that people want, especially for their children. If you're into that, children's birthday cakes are a huge, huge market. So again, it depends on who are you selling to, where is your key demographic, are you going to be one of those bakeries that likes to cater to everybody or do you like to stick to a niche? My friend, for example, loves that birthday cake over the top niche. Some people really love the wedding niche. So it really depends on what it is that you want to be doing. It is also about what is the purpose of your bakery? Now I'm coming at this from a home baking standpoint. Is your purpose to eventually go into a bakery storefront and this is just your stepping stone 
or is your purpose that this is just a hobby? Let's give some ballpark numbers of the things that I would do. Now, this is totally based on my own preferences. So again, if you are in those other categories that I talked about where you want to actually go into opening up your own baking business, then you might take a different approach. So this is solely what I would personally do in this moment right now. So as we know, I don't run my home baking business anymore. I put all of my time and energy into running this channel. But if I were to actually continue to run my home baking business, I would definitely set that minimum very, very high. But my purpose is because I want to only make a few select things. I don't want to be having a constant roll of orders. I think at the beginning when you want that constant roll of orders, you do have to kind of keep your minimums a little bit lower at first. And as you build up that clientele, you'll get higher and higher. So I would probably start my minimum at $500 Canadian. I know that seems really, really high, but like I said, I want to do orders far and few between, but I want to be able to put all of my detail and soul into that order. And I never, ever want that feeling of, huh, I really wish that I had charged more. It's becoming not worth it to me. So for me, $500, what does that exactly look like? Well, I did a video a few weeks ago about a wedding cake. I think the title was something like this traveled on a boat in a car ride or something like that. And a lot of you guys asked me, would it be $500 even with a fake tear and all that stuff? What the $500 minimum means is that I don't care how plain you want your order, it's still going to be $500. And in that video, I think I said the cake would be like $650 or something of the like. Don't quote me on that. Um, but I said something like that. But I said it wouldn't have mattered what type of decorations went on there. It would have still been a $500 minimum for three tiered cakes. So in my instance, I actually only want to do tiered cakes. I don't want to do a single tiered cake. That being said, if somebody came to me and said, please, please, please do this single tiered cake, I would still say, regardless of what you want on there, it's $500. So if you want a single tier, I will make you a single tier, but it's still going to be $500, whether it's a six inch cake, a four inch cake, an eight inch cake, a semi-naked cake, it's going to be $500. So how did I come to that $500 price tag? Well, I came to that price tag because most three-tiered cakes, which is the product that I want to be making, is going to run you $500. Even something like a semi-naked cake with a drip or anything like that is probably going to be around $500. That is just the market that I'm in right now. If I go to any bakery, that's kind of the pricing that's around. So that's why I personally would set my pricing there because I want to make three tiered cakes, wedding cakes, birthday cakes, whatever it is, that's what I want to do. Are my orders probably going to be far and fewer between with a minimum like that? Probably. And that's exactly what I want because I don't want a bunch of orders coming in and to be overwhelmed on the weekends. I want to be able to spend time with my family while still doing my passion and still making money off of it. So that's why I personally would set my minimum that high. Moving along to the next point, how do you actually set that minimum? So right off the bat, when somebody contacts you, I think a message that right away says that there is a $500 minimum order will really, really save you time. This is another reason why I think dollar minimums are great because you're not going to waste all of that time with a client where you're talking to them about all the little details and then you have to quote them a price and then they're shocked. Right away, if you're giving them that dollar minimum, they've already set in their head, okay, it's probably going to be that at least. You're going to want to sign some sort of contract that states, of course, that they understand that the minimum is that amount. That being said, you still need to be ultra, ultra clear about what it is that you're going to do. Yes, there's a $500 minimum. Yes, you're looking at the picture and you're saying, yes, I can do that for $500. It's going to look like this, this, and this. So you still want to make sure that you follow all the same protocols that you always do for taking orders very, very clearly so you don't run into a sticky situation. And finally, let's talk about the part that really intimidates a lot of us bakers that are trying to make money off of our art and trying to gain a profit. The complaints. What do you do about potential complaints? So here's where I have 
um, a few things to say that have been on my mind. Ever since I've started this channel, I kid you not, I have gotten more complaints about my pricing on this channel than I ever did in real life. Now, here's the thing guys, and I've said this time and time again, but my pricing and your pricing, especially if you're halfway across the world, even if you're in a different province than I am, it's going to be vastly, vastly different. One of the things that really irritates me, and I'm sorry for this mini rant here, is when people say, you're ripping people off, Ashley. That is a ripoff. That cake is a ripoff. I would never pay that amount. First of all, it's incredibly rude to come to my channel where I'm making you free content and saying that. Second of all, I say time and time again how it's just my opinion. Am I asking you to buy the cake? No, I'm just telling you what I would possibly charge for that cake to give you guys a framework of the price differences between my cakes. Don't feel like you have to justify what you're charging. You have to justify it in the sense that you say, this is what I am charging for this product that you are asking for. But you don't have to allow someone to nickel and dime you and haggle with you and bargain with you because you don't go to any store, to a designer fashion store, and you don't say to them, well, I really like that jacket, but I saw it at Nordstrom Rack for $100 cheaper, so can you do it for $100 cheaper? You can't say that and you don't say that. So don't allow people to say that to you. You're not ripping people off with a minimum because you're telling them exactly what it is that you're going to make for the price. Is that not how all retail works? I believe it is. So try to remember that when you are giving a quote. And if they don't like it, that is totally justifiable, totally fine on their part, have no hurt feelings about that. And this goes back to what is your personal goal with your bakery? If it is to make money on a steady basis and you want to do that and you haven't quite built up the reputation yet where people specifically want your work and they're coming to you with orders that are very specifically about your technique, your designs and your flair and style, it's kind of like, I don't know, maybe a drip cake, a generic drip cake that they're coming to you for that lots of people do then yeah, you're not going to make a whole lot in the beginning when you've got clientele that are specifically asking you for things like that. So again, it's about you having to balance where your price point is going to stand. Are you getting what you want out of your pricing minimums? And so those are all of my thoughts on setting a minimum dollar amount as opposed to a minimum number amount. I know some of you don't even have minimums at all implemented, but I just always think of how much products and ingredients I have left over from an order that I can't necessarily use on another order. And I also just think of the cleanup the time, the energy, right? Even one simple little cookie order, like a dozen cookies, could take up, you know, a few hours of your time. And for me, that type of thing is definitely not worth it when I wanna spend time with my family. So think about it, if you're doing a lot of orders in succession and taking on a dozen cookies is no big deal because you're already doing so many cookies that day, so you're really not wasting any product and you're really not having to start from scratch and things have been made in bulk, then you can totally think about that and let yourself weigh those options. Let's get into the subscriber submission of the day. This one comes from at eats and treats underscore SL on Instagram. Be sure to go and follow them. I love this little two tiered cake. Super, super adorable. And I love that punchy red color. And if you want to be the next subscriber submission of the video, then please follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram where you can either tag me in a photo or you can send me a photo of any dessert. All levels are welcome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye.